Well, it's time to talk about how to get into a visual effects or animation studio as a junior artist. Let's go. Don't forget to subscribe, and if you like it, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. So my very first video on YouTube was on this subject, and it was a general video on all the different ways to get into a visual effects or animation studio. I generally divide it into four areas, and uh, this is gonna be part of a deeper dive into the, the uh, junior artist role. Uh, the other ones I've done so far are production assistant and how to get in as a render wrangler. And some of the next videos I'm gonna be doing is how to get into a technology department or a facility or administration department as an entry point to get into the studio. I'll put a link in the description to that first video I did below as well as the playlist that this is a part of. Now I've gathered three visual effects and animation professionals, veterans, if you will. We've got Jackie, a rotoscope supervisor. We've got Rosie Galvin, who's a senior recruiter from Sony Animation. And I have Digital Domain's Phil Kramer, who's the head of animation and also a visual effects supervisor. You might have seen a video I did with him just a couple of months ago, where he went into a deep dive into his career, and I'll link to that below as well as right here. So when I say junior artist, I generally mean a subset of artist roles, most commonly animators, lighters, compositors, rotoscopers, match movers, riggers, and effects artists, and more. Now, you don't need an education, but it really helps. Art school is a great idea. Art school, especially if it's uh, aimed towards film and, and, and TV, is going to give you a base level education that you really do need and can benefit from to get into a studio. It does cost a lot. I know a lot of students rack up debt doing it. Some students regret some of the debt that they took on. And there are a lot of ways to self-train these days using online resources, uh, free or cheaper tutorials. Uh, you can do remote schools and, and all kinds of options, more and more every day. So you don't need to spend a lot of money on your education, but you do need to put in the time to get good and be able to build the skills that pay the bills. One of the things you're gonna need is a reel. Now the reel is a digital file these days. It's a small edit of your best work that you're gonna be sending along with your resume. And it's really the, the number one thing you're gonna be judged by is your reel. Some of our folks we're gonna talk to in a moment, they're gonna talk to you about that specifically. Two ways that artists often get into studios when they're junior is through internships or as a new hire. Internships are for a finite period of time, usually, I don't know, four, six, eight weeks. Um, and during that time, you go through a lot of the new hire training that a new hire would. Of course, if you get on as a new hire, well, then you start at the studio and that should be for some longer contract period, most likely not a staff position to start, uh, almost certainly. So interns get exposure and they get education, but some internships can be a little exploitive, whether or not the studio intends for it to be or not. Uh, they'll end up being used as cheap labor to get through some crunch and, you know, knuckling down and just doing one task over and over again for six to eight weeks is not really uh, a fruitful uh, internship, except I would say, even if it's exploitive, do it anyway, because you want to get that first studio on your resume. That way, when you go back after school to go to a studio, they're going to see that you've already done an internship. That means you've already done new hire training, been exposed to the pipeline, and you are going to be much better along than someone who didn't have an internship. Even if it's an exploitive internship where you don't learn a lot on the internship in reality and you just get shoved in a corner to do a repetitive task, take it anyway. It's going to do loads for your transcript and for your resume as you move along. So I'm going to stop talking here and I'm going to hand it over to the folks that really do the hiring out there. They're the ones judging junior artists, bringing them into the studio, and I'm going to let them tell you what they think. I asked them three questions. So the first question is, what is the best way to get into a junior role at a visual effects and animation studio? The next question is, is it even realistic to get into a visual effects and animation studio if you have no prior experience? And finally, is there any reason you would caution against going into the visual effects or animation industry as an artist, or at least some pitfalls that they should look out for? Uh, I'm Rosie Galvin, and I am a senior recruiter at Sony Imageworks. All right. <laughs> My name is Jackie. I am a Roto Paint supervisor. I've worked in the industry for 14 years now. Yeah, and Philip Kramer, we work together at Digital Main, where you're currently the head of animation and a visual effects supervisor. I think the best way to get into a junior role is to look for an internship. Uh, a lot of studios have them, and it's a great way as a junior artist 
to come in and really get properly trained as a junior artist. That way you're not thrown into the deep end. Uh, they take the time to do, you know, in-depth training with you. Uh, I know at Sony in particular, uh, our internship program is eight weeks. So essentially when a regular artist comes in, they do one week of training where our interns, they do eight weeks of very intensive training on our software, our pipeline. Uh, you get to work hand in hand with a seasoned artist and you really get to know the ins and outs of that role before you're thrown into the deep end. Uh, so I think if there's any opportunity to take an internship, that's the best way to get in as a junior artist. Also to keep in mind that you may not start at a very large studio as your first job right out of school. So uh, keeping an eye out for the smaller studios that may not work on those big blockbuster movies. It may not be the most glamorous uh, project that you're working on, but it's experience and it's teamwork and you're getting to know how to work in a production environment and to work under quota schedules and deadlines. And doing that, you can network and get to, you know, know people within the industry. And that's really the best way is through networking and knowing, you know, people at larger studios that can recommend you and say, hey, this, this guy or gal just really did great over here. We should bring him on as a junior artist. Okay, so I, I think strongly you got to work incredibly hard and dedicate yourself to it and understand this is a full-time job. It's not a game. So you really work hard on it and refine your skills. And the second thing is it's incredibly important to be really friendly about it because you have to imagine like we work amongst the same people for hours and hours and hours. And this is a really important thing. One thing I always tell uh, my, my the people working for me is like never say no, say yes, but. And this is, I think, something to really keep in mind. So meaning it's like, uh, can you have this by tomorrow? Yes, but it's gonna look terrible. That's a good answer. No, it's not. Uh, same thing, this goes for everything. You always say, yes, but I can't do it in time. Yes, but I need overtime. Yes, but I need blah, blah, blah. Yes, but the rig isn't made even yet. But it's still, you wanna have a positive person on your team that gives you that impression. You know what? I'm gonna make it work. Whatever you tell me, I'm gonna try to figure that out. I'm gonna tell you what's not, why it can't happen. Because the problem is for often the supervisor, this becomes close to a challenge. When somebody says, no, I know like, well, no, you can do it, <laughs> but it's gonna look terrible, but, 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 you know, all the same reason. So my point is think about it like that. Never say no. Obviously it's inappropriate, say no. Uh, I mean, the best way to get into the industry in general is a kind of two things, uh, talent and luck, <laughs> really. Um, I mean, talent is important. You need to work hard, have a demo reel, uh, possibly go to school, ideally go to school because a lot of places recruit from schools now. And then also just have some timing and luck. Um, it is realistic. Uh, but is very, very competitive. Uh, keep in mind that when people, oh, I'm trying to think of how I'm gonna put this. <laughs> uh, let's say we have an animation position. We will get anywhere from 100 to 500 applicants for one position. So there is a chance that you could be chosen, but how are you gonna stand out from the rest of the students? If every reel looks the same, doesn't really impress us, doesn't show that kind of next level creativity, you're not gonna get much further. So you have to really have a passion and a drive towards this industry because you're gonna be spending lots of hours in the studio and we want someone who knows what they want to do and has a career goal and really has a passion for this industry. Uh, when we have hundreds of applicants what makes you so special? What makes you stand out from the rest? So it is possible if you come in and you impress us, you have a seller demo reel, uh, and keep in mind that your demo reel doesn't have to be long. It could be only two shots long, as long as it's quality. Always focus on quality over quantity. If you have you know, five or six shots on your reel, two of them are great, one of them is meh, not so great, and 
some of them are just work in progress. We're going to look at those ones that are not finished and not polished and wonder if you think this looks like production quality and why you put that on your demo reel. So we're really judging everything that's on that reel. So make sure it's polished and your best work is in the front and it's ready to go. And that will help you stand out as that best candidate to be the one that's chosen right out of school. Kaboom, I'm right here. So yes, it's possible. Uh, I think you gotta really work hard on your skills. That's what I was saying, like uh, I had the opportunity again, straight out of school to Sony Imageworks. You need a ton of luck, yeah, and no ego. <laughs> and I recommend you apply everywhere in the world and take wherever they take you, you know? That was for me the thing. I, I applied everywhere and then I got an amazing job. But it's not to imagine that I sent one demo. I sent like 100 or 150 and one person called me back and gave me the job. So a lot of people coming out of school end up being a roto artist uh, and then they build up to being a comper. Uh, so it's pretty easy to get into a roto job though a lot of our work is now going to India. So it is like fewer in between that you would find a junior job. Uh, but there's still like lots of opportunity. I mean, for the most part now, I would say uh, out of all the studios I've worked at, most of them are only hiring seniors and, and leads because of the job distribution. But if you're willing to travel, I know that's uh, that if you're willing to travel, then it's pretty easy to find something, for sure. I mean, for Roto, uh, it's definitely an underrated department. I've been in Roto Paint for basically the entire time that I've been in the industry. There's been a few times where I was in comp or I did some match move back in the day. But for the most part, I've been in Roto Paint and it's definitely like an underestimated department compared to like everybody wants to move to comp but it's a completely different level and completely different task that you have to do. And it takes a whole different level, uh, a whole different level, no, that's not the right word. A whole different set of skills to become uh, a very good paint artist or a very good roto artist. Uh, comp is a completely different department. So I would say that if you are aiming for comp, a little bit of roto experience is great, but if you want to be a roto artist, or a professional paint artist, those are completely different skills. Uh, one way that it's really easy for people to get into Roto Paint is to go through 3D conversion. That's how most people actually start in our industry because uh, it's it's an easier. It's an e <laughs> they need like a hundred people to do that job. They need a lot more people to do the conversion because they're doing it over a whole movie and it's usually like three months of Roto on everything in the shot, like me, the chair, the thing behind me, even when it's not necessarily what we would have normally roto I think that's a very good question. Um, I think the only reason that you should not join the industry is if you're really not passionate towards it. Uh, you're going to be spending a lot of hours and a lot of your life doing what you do. And if it's not something you want to spend your, your day doing and your career doing, then it really isn't for you. It's not a nine to five job. It's long hours. It's dedication. It's, it's God, a thankless position. Sometimes you're always trying to get the, the overall look from the director or from the, you know, whoever is giving you the direction, your manager, your uh, supervisor, it's their overall look. It's not your own personal project. And if you don't have that passion towards it and the energy to, to keep doing it and to keep pushing yourself, then it definitely isn't the industry for you. Um, I think that's, you know, a lot of people get into it not realizing how many hours they really are going to be putting into their job. And you have to keep that in mind when you're starting out your career that it's going to be tough. It's going to be a learning curve and you're never going to stop learning. Don't go into it thinking I've learned everything. I'm good to go. You could be 20 years into the industry and you're going to still be learning how to do your job and how to better yourself. Uh, you're probably going to work a lot. You're not going to like that, but uh... If you're into animation, do it. It's the greatest thing you can do. And visual effects in general, 
I'm sorry, I'm very naive and positive about it, even though doing it for a while. Visual effects is awesome and it's an incredible opportunity. I mean, I'm always thinking like we're complaining nonstop, but I'm doing the most beautiful images I could possibly do for multi-million dollar movies that many people will watch. How better can it get? You know, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. And if that sounds cool to you, I would look into it. If not, then get the hell away from it. <laughs> well, I mean, pitfalls in general for our industry is long hours. Uh, you're definitely, uh, I would say the one thing that I was most shocked about coming into the industry is you're not as creative as you would think. Like you're definitely following somebody else's art um, art vision compared to what you would think you were doing because when you go to school you like have your own individual product projects and you think of everything together and you create from like the beginning to end and you're more of a director producer in in school but when you get into the industry it's <laughs> you're following somebody else's so i want to thank jackie phil rosie appreciate all their feedback and hopefully you gain some information from them so as you saw roto is a common entry point uh, you are competing with cheap labor that's in non-western countries so if you're in a western country expect to be competing on a wage level with with folks at a pretty uh low rate um junior animators lighters riggers effects folks they do happen. You can get hired as a junior, but it is statistically rare. So understand that you're going for a long shot. The larger the studio, the more the long shot. Now, if your skills aren't quite there, if you're applying and you're not quite getting the jobs, you're getting feedback that your reel's not quite up to snuff, then you might want to look at other entry points, in which case I would back up, go back to the very first video I've posted in this playlist, the how to get a job in a studio, and I go over the four general areas to get in, because even if you have artist skills, you can enter the studio through a wrangling position or a technology role, or maybe through production, or even through facility administration. These positions are open to anyone generally with a with an okay skill set, and most artists have more than enough skills to qualify for those jobs. And then once you're in, you can start to develop the relationships. You start to meet people. You start to, to build up an artistic mentor or two to, to show your work. You start to grow your skills and then you have a leg up. So when your skills do finally progress to a certain level, you can go ahead and walk straight over to the recruiter's office and say, hey, would you like to look at my reel? And so this is a wonderful opportunity to take a step back and look at the whole studio and all the different ways to get into a studio and think about how to get in first as some other role and then move into an artist role. I know dozens of artists who got in as secondary roles, either through accounting or through uh, facilities, you know, moving desks or in the mailroom, like how I started. Uh, they just started there and worked their way in. Once you're in a studio, you're in the family. So there's a lot of support within a studio to grow its family and to grow its own employees and to let their skill sets flourish internally. They benefit, you benefit, it's, it's just a win-win for everyone. So again, good luck trying to get in as a junior artist. It takes a little bit of luck. It takes a lot of skill and some good timing. Think about smaller shops to get your first opportunity or an internship. And finally, once you do get in, even if it's through a secondary role, know that you can grow your skills within the organization. So if you take a lesser role or a less ideal role within the studio, get in. Once you're in, you can take the time to spread your wings and fly. Good luck. I'd love to hear your comments. Thanks everyone for watching. Goodbye.